Hello and welcome to another really hot night in London. I've got a fan on here. Let's just turn it off. I don't think you want to hear that fan all night long. Okay, TensorFlow GS. It is quite challenging. Over the past few months I've been learning it. Wow. <laughs> it's not like React or Vue or jQuery where you just read about the API and all this stuff. It's like it's just like a rabbit trail of like constant information, going to Wikipedia, 10 levels deep. You know, it's sort of like roughcast. Imagine throwing roughcast at a wall and then some of it will fall off. In fact, most of it will fall off and then you throw at it again. It's the same with this machine learning. You keep looking at different sources about the same thing, soft masks, neural networks, forward, all these things going on and on. Eventually it kind of starts to stick more and more. Believe me, I, I think I'm quite a quick learner, but it's, it's taken me quite a long time. I mean, I've done a few workshops now in London, and like every time I teach it, it's like I'm learning something new. So it's like, don't worry, take your time and stick with it. It might take you a long time, it's taken me a while to, you know, to, to really get the hang of it, but you know, keep going. Alright, so the last video we actually looked at the Iris example and training the, the model. So we, uh, we briefly looked over some of the stuff. So I think it was in the, the index file here. So we had the model fit thing. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay, so we created, uh, we had our four inputs to the, the neural network, which were the four categories of the, the iris flowers. And then we had our, you know, um, one hot encoded, you know, vectors of the categories. And we had um, two net two layers, so we have our our um, we have our initial four neurons that are going in, an input shape, and then we have our ten net, uh, neurons with the sigmoid activation function, and uh, of a shape uh, or oh, something. <laughs> we'll revisit that again. So sigmoid basically uh, it's like an, an activation function that is just commonly used for you know shrinking values down between 0 and 1 um, and allowing neurons to be activated uh, you know, to form patterns, non-linearities and stuff. We then at the output we have the three layers softmax which gives us a, a probability distribution of um, the categories which add up to 1 and then we compare our distributions with the actual real distributions with this categorical cross entropy really scary name it compares the distributions and then we use that to predict uh, category oh. and then we basically not basically complicatedly plot the the chart so just let's quickly revisit this again because just to refresh myself more so right let's just start it up Okay, so we go to our terminal and we go to iris npm run uh, watch, I think. Let's check see if we've got anything else running in the console here. This one, right. So let's just start it. La 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 When you first run parcel, it does take a, a while for it to build. Once it builds once, it sort of catches itself, and so that is much, much quicker. This almost seems a bit slower than Webpack, but initially, once it gets going, it is fast. I don't know. Parcel is just useful because it's a lot simpler than Webpack. Yeah, I like it. I really like it a lot. I need to uh, improve my recording studio a little bit because uh, I'm thinking of getting a green screen and having my green screen over the video. I just think a lot of, a lot of other YouTubers are doing that. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty tempted to go down that route. Right, so let's uh, open this page here. Oh, and I also will be improving this Mac, so I'll, 
a video quality will, uh, the processing speed when we're making these uh, interactive videos should get better. At least I've got a decent mic, you know. Oh, we're still building. Gee, come on. You got a drink here. It's 35 degrees in London today. This is aloe vera juice. I used to like this until I figured out how much sugar is actually in it. I don't think I'll be buying this anymore. See, when this, this is a, actually a MacBook Pro 13. That's why it's so slow. It's recording the screen and, it, and you can actually probably hear the fan going. These, these are the days. These are the days. Don't worry. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Here, look. I've got a spinny thing. I've got a fidget spinner here. I'm so tired I can't open it up. Oh, strange packaging. Don't do that to your Mac. Right, we've built it. So once it's built it, it's going to open up on port 1, 2, 6, like this. Great. Okay, so we went to our index file and we looked at the this one. So let's just remind ourselves here before we talk about what we're supposed to talk about this video. Because it's been a while since the last video and I want to... It's good to refresh ourselves, isn't it? So let's train, let this um, train a model from scratch. Right. So we create our sequential model, and the X train member is our two dimensional array with all the training values. And that's going to be of shape um, four for our input neurons. So it's 126 of four, yeah? And uh, also the Ys are 126 of 3. Because remember, we take our categories and we one-hot encode them so that we'll have like 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 0, 0. Because that's the way it just works good that way. That's the way it's done. Trust me on it. Trust me. I'm a salesman. Okay, so we got our... Dense layer, which has most of the processing. We have a sigmoid function. Uh, yes, and it, it's a, an input of um, four. You with me? Four. And then we want this ten neurons to output um, three categories. So we need three units, and we use softmax to give us a sum to one probabilities of each category. Okay? Right, and then we create the ADAM optimizer uh, and the categorical cost entropy, and we just fit the model. And we have these callbacks on each epoch, which is a full training cycle of all the data, and we plot the losses. Okay, that's it. Let's let's go on to the part I want to talk about. So, um, we have this loader stuff. So what what we can do is we want to see how what code we need to load the model, save the model. And that's all I'm going to do for the rest of this video. <clears throat> this stuff makes you more thirsty. Right, so let's just put breakpoints in here and just like... Spam them. Spam them. There's not actually much code here, isn't there? I'm at, I'm at training course today on TensorFlow.js. People are asking me how we can integrate TensorFlow.js with JavaScript. Well, I mean, with React and all that stuff, there's literally nothing to it. You know, um, there's no integration. It's just basically import your code and use it as normal JavaScript. Nothing special. Enough said, I guess. So we put some breakpoints in there. Well, wow, this is a 10 minutes video already. Right. Let's refresh the page. And see. Okay. Don't want this. Okay, so um, there is an initial uh, firing of this code here. So we're going to storage Google APIs model JSON. Right, okay, if that works, we then fetch this stuff and return. Okay, right, so what's it returning here? 
response so what we can we're getting a readable stream fair enough ambulances or whatever fire police it's london one of the benefits of recording london is you get free sound effects out there i really hope like nothing bad's happened there you know what there's always people needing help isn't there right Update local model status. So ah, this is basically if you already saved the model, I think it gives you the option to um to load it immediately. Let me just check um skip this through. So yeah, so there's nothing there if it's saved, not saved. So let's just refresh the page again, get back to our breakpoint. Right. So update local model status. Let me just increase the font size a little bit here for you guys. Uh, update. Check the presence and status of locally saved models in IndexedDB. That's interesting. It saves it in IndexedDB. So we just update the buttons here. That's what that's doing. Await IO list models. What is that? Oh, it's, un it's minified code. Let's look that up. Okay, so here's the page. So let's see. What do you want? Do, 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 do. List models, what does that do? List all models stored in the register storage mediums. Okay. For the web browser environment, registered mediums are local storage and index DB. Local storage and index I wonder what the difference is. So that's a model layer. Create a sequential model. Create a layer. And then that will. This is the model. Ah, yes, okay, it saves it there. And then it must go to local storage to retrieve the model. And then you can delete the model like that. Okay. Move model. Move a model from one URL to another. Moving within a storage medium. Okay, so you can move it from one database to the next. So we save a model here. We then move it from this local storage to index DB, which seems more sensible. Okay. And we can remove it. Right, okay. So that's what it's doing there. It's uh, checking that. Oops, lost my console. Right. Okay, let's go back to the browser. Okay, list models. So let's just step over that. It's an async function. So models info, there's nothing there, right? Okay. Um, so we're going to jump over that, and we're going to get to this one. No local models. Okay, that makes sense. Right, so let's jump over that. Um, I guess we're now what we do is uh, we can save the model, right? So first, let's just train it from scratch and skip over all this code. Oh, it's getting dark now. It's like 20 past 9 in London. Pretty dark outside. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get comfortable here. So, it's done. So let's click save model locally. So there's a function, we get our model, which is this big thing. And then we do model.save, which is a I wonder what it, where did it get that local model? Oh, it's from this, right? So, ah, I see. So you, you can basically create a, an index DB string like that. I've not actually used index DB professionally, but I know it's there. But the kind of clients I work for, I just never really bothered to use it. But it is very powerful. 
So I guess it's going to be one of those minified tensorflow functions. We can't really see what's going on, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that's all that is to it. That's how you save a model. Um, let's continue. Um, update local model status. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. We then can list the models. Okay, so we have this model locally. Oh, there's a nice brief coming into the window, keeping me cool. Okay, so then just like some helper functions to show the here what the model's called, and the timestamp, and some more buttons. Okay, makes sense. I'll kosher. So I guess remove local model would we'll just call the delete model like that, right? Pretty much. Self explanatory. Um and then that's going to come in here when we update the local model status. When is that called again? Let me just check. Uh, just search for that. Um, where else is that called? It's called there. So, oh, it's just called when we click that button. And when we remove the model. Okay, so it's been manually called. Alrighty. Let's go. So the other thing we just need to check is how they do the remote one. So that is done when they do load from uh, load pre pre chain. So let's click that. Right, and let's just get rid of this console here. So loading pre chain model from this URL, which is from Google, and all that does is let me just step into here. We um, do a load model with TensorFlow.js, which I guess takes care of all the HTTP requests. And then we get the model. Surprise, surprise. So that's going to go out. And then no Grammarly. No Grammarly. Um, load model. So load where is that? Where is the function that's? Where is the function that's called once we load the remote model? Okay, so there we are. We load the model like this. Let's just refresh the page again. I'm kidding. So it might be doing that somehow loading it behind the scenes. I have a suspicion. Okay, we're still running. Why did we crash? Right, let's just um let's delete uh okay we don't we haven't saved the model that's good let's click on load pretend model again and see if we can actually figure out what's going on so we we um load the pretend train model load hosted pretend model okay let's click on it properly oh we lost the breakpoint hmm local remote button Do 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 So this is kinda like maybe this should be split onto separate files. There's a lot of code here. Dunno. So local load local remove button. Where's the function again? I've I've it's in it's in um loaders, isn't it? Right. Load hosted pretend model. Okay, that's what I want to do. This one. I I don't get what's going on. Why is it? Let's just refresh the page. Let's click this again. Okay, it's worked. Sometimes 
just give a good old browser refresh, all your problems will go away. Right? You heard it here first. Right. Loading pre tape model. F10. Okay, we've got the model. And that is that all there is to it? There must it must be just be that's brought into TensorFlow DS and you can use it automatically. Um let's just do another search just so I can convince myself that that is all there is. Um That's not what we want. Let's do this again in here. Load pre-trained model. Oh, you cannot be serious. WebStorm. Don't look at the cache folder. Let's go into directories. Oh, directories. I'm I'm thinking about moving to Visual Studio, but I'm not quite there yet because it's just some things that just really annoy me with Visual Studio, which WebStorm does fine. I think I'll make a video comparing the two at some point. Right, so um, directories, we don't, we, we want to go into, this is just the caching stuff, you know, so, um, Iris, um, we don't want to be searching in there, for sure we don't. Okay, done. Right, so let's see if we got that load pre model thing. Right, so it's in a loader and it's an index, so loader... That's the function that we're looking at there, which is this one loader, okay. Um, and then, so that's the one where we, we take the URL, we load the model from the URL, and then there's another hit up here in index. So, ah, look, so here's it as model equals await loader dot this one, and then ah, we're assigning the model to the global variable, okay. <laughs> that is it. That's that's me. Uh, got it now. Okay. Sorry for the delay there. Right. So we yeah we return the model. Um. So I'll just press step out of this function, and I'll take me to Grammarly again. That's great. Grammarly. Thank you very much. Let's close that. <laughs> and onload woof whatever that is. So let's just um let's just get rid of all these tabs, shall we? Close tabs to the close others, yes. And let's open up the index file. And let's go to the um, function, this one. And let's put a breakpoint there. And let's press F8. Okay, let's refresh the page and click load again. Just so I, we see that model return to the index file. And then let's test it with input data. So we click load pretend model and then we get the model here and then we just skip all this okay let's just let's do it again right we have the model from the Google server mission Three complete! Neighbors are probably wondering what I'm shouting about here. So we've got a model. And then we uh, predict on manual input. What does that do? I guess we just find out. Run inference on manual input Irish flower data. Okay, so I guess it's looking at this stuff here and applying the the the, uh, the remote model. So get a model in and then we do okay we check that and then what we do is we create um, a tensor uh, of shape one of four because of one entry and it's the one entry here and we want the four values to go into our neural network model that loaded from the server. Yes? You with me? Hang in there, this is a long video. It's probably one of the longest videos I've ever made. I think that I'm just... I want to show, like, not everything's smooth in programming. 
sometimes things just take a while to get slacked up and and understanding what's going on and just getting your gear in the brain. If you like this new style, let me know and I'll keep making them like that. If you like the heavily edited videos where I just go through all like it's easy, then let me know. And if you want a green screen and better lighting, there, yeah, let me know as well. <laughs> right, so okay, um. The get manual input, that is a, that's basically create a tensor. So we have, no it's not actually, it's going to give us a, a native array. And then what we do is we create a tensor 2D. So that's a, a two dimensional array, but it's converted into GPU stuff. So the input data is, um, okay, we've got four here. And then we've got um, one and four. Actually, why, why is it, why is that an array? Uh, let's just go to the API here. So Tensor 2D Tensor 2D Right Okay, so input data is an array So values is um, an array like that and then we've got uh, a shape. Ah, it's a shape. Okay, that's that's fair enough. It's um yeah, so you think that you know TensorFlow.js would be able to infer the shape from the array, but you know if the array was really really huge, then you wouldn't really want TensorFlow.js to have to work out how to do it. That's why you specify the shape manually. So the shape here is one item, and it's got four values, and these will be the four inputs going into uh, the network, and then it'll be they'll have a ten here. So the four comes in, goes to the ten here, and then goes out to the three, which is the categories. Okay. Um, yeah, so we get our tensor here, and just the shape is one and four, and then we just want to run a predict function on the input, and that will give us a value of. Um, it should give us probabilities, isn't it? So let's just get that value here. We could do console log, but let's just do the um, on the console here with data sync. So go to console, clear all this. We want to get the predict out. Um, uh, do, 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 do we have this? Actually, we could just do it here, couldn't we? So there's there's a. So we've got a prediction, and we want to see what that is. So that is an. Uh, basically, it's the probabilities of the category being. So obviously, you can see here this particular settings is the probability of this these inputs of the flowers being this category here and then what we do is we actually create an array from this one which is a float 3 array so that's a f okay um so this is obviously able to be passed straight into the native array from which should give us uh, an array like this and then there is um this thing here argmax what is the arg max on a tensor? I guess it's uh, let's let's figure out what it is. Arg max and it takes in um, x and axes. Returns the indices of the maximum values along the x axis. Right, so. That would basically be return zero, I imagine, right? Because um, uh, so there's our so the index must be zero because the maximum one. Um, returns indices of that's gonna be a tensor, right? Isn't it? The result has the same shape as the input. Okay, so that'll be a tensor. And then we get the data out. So I imagine it would be something like, like let's just let's just put it into the console. Let's not try to be clever. Let's just stick it in the console, like a good, like a good Boy Scout. <laughs> so that gives us, um, zero. But it's the same shape. Returns the indices of the maximum values along the x-axis. Along the axis, right. Okay. 
Okay, the shape would be a uh, one-dimensional, right? That makes sense. They're not the same shape. It's the dimension. Okay, so if you've got this one D tensor here, I guess the index would be two, right? Let's just run this. Two. Very good. This one is a two D tensor, so that would be two, uh, uh, and then it would be um, probably zero, I guess, right? Two and zero, or one. Why? Turns that and the result has the same shape as TS input to the dimension from the X axis is removed. That runs two, okay. This one is um I'm not actually sure why it's like that. Okay, ah, axis equals one. That does something to it, right? So arg max axis print. Um, I'm not quite sure if you, if some of you guys can explain what is going on there. Uh, I would like you to please write it in the comments. We understand this one anyway. That's all we need, right? Uh, right. So the the one that's going to be um that 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 class, is it. and then we just set the UI and we're done. Happy days, <sighs> right? There we go, that's about half an hour, um, just to talk about this one. Thanks very much for watching, I think, uh, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next. Um, yeah, I'll, it'll be a surprise, okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're at. See ya.